Hello, hello, and welcome to this game overview of Star Wars Java's Palace. This card game is best played with four to six players, though there are options for two to three players as well. Games last about 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the number of players playing. The game contains 13 victory tokens, 19 character cards, with characters that are either from the Rebel Alliance or Java's Palace, four agenda cards, and six reference cards. The reference cards help players keep track of the cards that may or may not be in play by showing which cards are part of which faction and the number that each card has. The reference cards also clarify briefly what each player card does. The game is played over several rounds, during which players try to use the numbers on the character cards or the effects of the character cards to achieve the game's agenda. There are four possible agendas to choose from. The game recommends that for the player's first games, it's best to use the Exalted One agenda. To set up, shuffle the 19 character cards, then set the top card of the pile in the middle of the play area, face down. After dealing each player one card, place the rest of the deck in the middle of the play area, also face down, right next to that single face down card. Each player should also get a reference card. To start the game, the first player draws a card from the deck. They then look at both cards in their hand and decide which one they want to add to their play area. This decision will likely be based on how to best achieve the game's agenda. For this game, the Exalted One agenda says that the highest number in hand wins the round. So in this case, the player might choose to keep this card in hand for now because it is the biggest card they have. They play the other card and resolve its action, and the play moves clockwise to the next player. Some card's effects will knock other players out of the game or make players discard cards. In either case, cards must be played face up, visible to all players. If a player is knocked out, they do not resolve their remaining card's effects. They simply have to wait until the round is over to rejoin the next round. The rounds end one of two ways. The first way is that the deck runs out. The player who picks up the last card from the deck completes their turn as usual. Then, following this final turn, the players determine who is the winner based on the players that are still in the round and based on the agenda card. The winner gains one victory token. If it is a tie, all players that are tied get a token. The other way that a round may end is if there is only one player still active in the round. They automatically win the round regardless of the agenda and take one token. Once a round is complete, reshuffle the character cards and use the same setup as the beginning of the game. The agenda card does not get changed each round. It stays the same for the whole game. The last player to win a round goes first. If there is a tie, you randomly decide amongst the winners who is going to start the next round. In a four-person game, the winner is the first person to get four victory tokens. The number of tokens it takes to win varies depending on the number of players. There is a handy table in the rulebook to explain it. So you continue to play round after round until one player has four victory tokens, and that means they are the winner of the game. Jabba's Palace is an easy Star Wars themed card game that is great to travel with and play with friends. We tried playing the game with two, then three, and finally four players, and found that while the two-player version leaves a bit to be desired, bumping the player count up to four or more really increases the intrigue and fun. With simple to understand end game goals and easy to resolve character effects, Jabba's Palace is a nice warm-up game to kick off a larger Star Wars themed game night. For more sci-fi themed tabletop games, card or otherwise, check out the Comic Hunter or the Comic Hunter.net. Happy gaming!